And that started to become really one of the real social places for us as kids growing up. I'm Joyce Smith, and I was born here in Carlsbad in 1929 in a little maternity home on First Street. And I've been here ever since. In the 50s, Carlsbad was still a small town. And our children could always feel safe in going any place in town. But later in the 60s, it got to be a bigger town and you were a little bit more cautious. My name is Shirley Brokenshire Wright and my father was a pastor and um, he became pastor here at the Carlsbad Union Church in 1943. We moved from Pasadena uh, down to Carlsbad. I thought at that time that it was uh, really the country because we had lived in Pasadena where they had sidewalks and all those kinds of things and we came to Carlsbad with the beach and and no sidewalks and it was wonderful. We uh, went down to the beach about two or three times a week. Some kids went every day to the beach uh, to work on their tans pretty much. We tried to get a good tan during the summer so that we could be beautiful when we went back to school. Uh, and also we rode on airbags uh, which were pillowcases uh, many times. We would wet the pillowcase and then you fill it with air and uh, you swing it around and fill it up with air and tie the end and then we go out in the waves and ride the waves in. My name is uh, Danny Ashcraft and I came to Carlsbad probably about 1960 when I was about 10 years old and we've, uh, I've lived in North County all my life. We would go to the beach all year round, and uh, so whether there are lifeguards there or not, we would, we would still be there. And, and I do remember um, State Beach was my favorite beach. We walked a lot. You know, as, I guess as when you're young, especially back then, you didn't mind walking everywhere, and we walked all over Carlsbad. When we were kids, Haas Grove was, wasn't even called Haas Grove. It was the forest. So we'd go and explore probably the most influential factor for us was curiosity. We'd be heroes, we'd be explorers, we'd do all kinds of different things. We just knew how to have fun as kids and not pay any attention who you were where, and, and anything about your background. While the kids played, parents were involved in activities that were the focus of community life. My name is Lavange Batista and my husband it was a career marine and he retired after 22 years. We moved to Carlsbad in 1956 because we were given an opportunity to buy a, a house here and it was just um, a wonderful transition for us. We, we liked a slower life. We both were used to small towns and Carlsbad was small then. Our son raised rabbits and he had 50 at one time in our backyard. The scouting in Carlsbad was was a very big part of our life. Uh, many times on weekends, Dad would be going one direction with the Boy Scouts, and I'd be going in another direction with the Girl Scouts. The Kellys were so wonderful to open their eucalyptus grove, which has a slight hollow in the center for the uh, children of Carlsbad to use under you know, supervision for overnight camping. It was primitive camping because the only thing that was brought in that he had there was just a, a spigot with uh, drinking water. Well, I'm Betty Walrich, and we came to Carlsbad in 61 because Hughes Aircraft moved my husband down here. We looked through all the towns from San Clemente to Del Mar to Vista and decided there was no house that we could find that had a room that was big enough for a pool table. So we had to build. When we came here, the wide open spaces were such that uh, before breakfast with a cup of coffee and one to two bulldogs, I would go for four miles over the hills here and uh, never touch asphalt or cement. We had a lot of live wildlife here. There was a mountain lion that would come by for a drink of water. And there were, of course, a skunk that used to try to get in the window. And there were uh, coy there was the coyotes and the, there was a little red fox that lived in my lower 
uh, lot. So it was very, there was a lot going on. The natural environment and lots of open space were the raw materials of Carlsbad life, but the energy of its citizens was the catalyst for community activities that became the resources for hometown fun. The volunteer firemen really got started in the early 50s, to my recollection, and all of the different men in town that had all these aspirations of being uh, firemen joined the volunteers and then they took collections and did things and they were able to buy the first fire truck and put it all together and downtown had a huge big pole that they put this big old siren on and when there was a fire they put that made the siren go and everybody responded to get to that fire, get to the fire truck and so on. My name is John D. Slater. I came to Carlsbad in 1960, went to work for the city of Carlsbad as a city manager, January 4th, 1960. We had about 9,000 people here and uh, they weren't all working. But it was a happy little community, a lot of spirit in this, in this place. There's a wonderful place out here in Terramar. It's called the San Diego Gas and Electric Company. And they paid over 75% of all the property taxes when I came to the city of Carlsbad as city manager. And of course, that was, that was a big plum. For many years, the essence of Carlsbad community spirit was expressed in Spring Holiday, a homegrown celebration that traditionally involved everyone in town. My name is Jack Kubota. Uh, I'm a uh, almost 40-year resident of Carlsbad. I uh, brought my um, wife and two children to Carlsbad in, uh, at Christmas of 1956. In the springtime, we'd have a spring holiday parade. Uh, all of the community civic enterprises, organizations, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, the Campfire Girls, all the service clubs, the Rotarians, the Lions, Kiwanians, and all of the people would, would just have an old-fashioned impromptu parade. Uh, the, we had equestrian riders, bicycle riders, people on wagons, uh, People would even haul their ski boats down the parade route. The spring holiday parades were organized by my best friend's father, Mr. Pedley. And, I mean, he was the instigator, as we called it then. We had lots and lots of fun doing um, the floats, generally using some of the flowers, locally grown and having the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, the Girl Scouts, the Brownies, the Academy Band, all of these types of things uh, going down the street. It wasn't a very long parade, and the women's club ladies had their zany hat contest at the time and always were riding in convertible cars, and that was really lots of fun for everyone. I'm Jace McClellan, a Carlsbad native. One of the neatest memories I have about growing up in town was the annual spring holiday celebration in, in April. That was the only time that my father would allow me to put playing cards in the spokes of my tires and participate in the parade. When I was, I believe, eight years old, we won the pet show contest to this little mutt named Tiger. That's what Carlsbad was like. Obviously, for a dog like Tiger and a kid like me to win, it must have been small. Carlsbad children also looked forward to local Christmas celebrations, especially a visit to the fireman's magical village at the fire station. Christmas, they, when we finally got our fire department and they built the big place where the fire trucks were kept, they took everything out of that building and converted it to a wonderful, wonderful Christmas scene that people would come and see from all around. That was a real highlight of the town. Other seasons were marked by a series of special events, and most local calendars were crowded with community service activities. They had just a very small library here in Carlsbad. We moved here in 1956. and. 
they were going to try to make it an independent library and so Georgina Cole took charge and they asked for donations of all kinds of books and they got boxfuls of books and these books had to be cataloged well many of them were without covers so they had to literally be read and I'm a fast reader and I took that job on to help them and I would write out a little blurb about the book and they'd type it up and put it in and it was great <laughs> but it was really a service they could use and one I enjoyed doing we had an outstanding librarian by the name of Georgina Cole, and, uh, and one of her earliest uh, ideas was she wanted to involve children at all ages and uh, get going with the children's library program. Georgina came to me and insisted that we had to do something for a children's reading room. At the time, I had just joined the Carlsbad Lions Club, and so I went to those bozos, excuse me, uh, uh, my friends, and. Um, asked them if they'd help me get some money and steal some lumber and build a outdoor children's reading area. Well, we did that. We, we you know, we used some, like I say, stolen lumber. We, for the roof area, we used palm fronds, and it looked like, you know, a South Sea bar area, but uh, it was okay. The book fair came in after spring holiday and was, uh, as far as I was concerned, one of the major problems of the whole year because through the year we marked books. People donated books and uh, we collected them in various back holes. The first one started out in a hole up on uh, the Kelly Ranch and then we came down here to another place. Uh, it uh, got to where we were marking about 10,000 books, and that's a lot of books. Local politics added another dimension to community life. It was very interesting to take part in anybody's political uh, race. It was uh, something that we were involved in here. Our community was so small, everybody knew everybody. And so you worked diligently on it because you really wanted it to turn out well. And for some reason or other, I got on the Park Commission. The Park Commission was a delightful thing in those days. Uh, uh, we met in the old, old, old council chambers, which was a little building, a little house. We went on horseback and jeep looking for areas that were, would be useful for parks, such as the La Costa Waterfall. My dad served on a committee that uh, went to San Diego for hearings for the 5 freeway and um, their proposal, the city fathers thought that it would be better for the freeway to be moved a mile further east uh, back to the El Camino Real area instead of cutting the town in half as it seemed uh, to us in those days. And uh, he went to San Diego for some hearings and I remember him telling about speaking at the hearing um, but however, it turned out that evidently the hearings were not successful <laughs> and uh, they put the freeway right through the center of town and kind of cut the town in half. But it hasn't bothered us too much. Community spirit wasn't the only inspiration for getting involved in Carlsbad. Hardly a project was planned, a program completed or achievement recognized without a public celebration, which in itself was the occasion of widespread coverage in the local press. Committees met, officers were elected, checks were passed, queens were crowned, and prizes were awarded. All were duly reported, putting lots of local names and faces in print. Friends and neighbors could keep up with each other's doings, and the idea of community service was constantly being reinforced as good times as well as good deeds. Getting to know each other through organized activities invariably led to more informal friendships. There was very little uh, c uh, civic social life, you might say. And I remember my first dinner party uh, at which I cooked the meal in a Dutch oven that came across the plains with Kit Carson in the 1840s, cooked it in the fireplace, and we sat on piles of wood and uh, had a very good meal. Progressive dinners were not only something that everyone enjoyed, but it was something that filled a need here in Carlsbad. Many of our homes were, were not terribly large, but they would suffice for a course. We had a lot of fun at the Twin Ends. Uh, my Jackie Kentner was my friend, 
and uh, we, she often had birthday parties at her house upstairs in the Twin Inns.